All right. Hopefully everyone can uh, can hear me okay. We're going to uh, get things started. It's uh, six o'clock and uh, just wanted to um, welcome everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeff Lees and I'm uh, I'm with the uh, Town of Penetang Machine. And uh, just on behalf of my colleagues in, in Midland and Tiny, um, we welcome uh, we welcome everyone this evening, and it's great to, uh, as has already been suggested, it's great to see everyone come together in uh, in a forum like this from uh, from the various municipalities. Uh, thanks everyone for joining, not only those that are with us uh, currently, but also those that are watching on Rogers TV. Um, a little bit of history uh, with respect to uh, the airport, uh, the Rony Airport Commission uh, strategic uh, report. In late 2018, as members of council and, and members of the public will recall, the three municipalities approved funding uh, to do the subject review. And in turn, the three municipalities engaged the services of the Lumex group. And with us this evening, we have Trent Gervais and Lisa Davidson uh, with the Lumex group. In uh, late 2019, so fast forward 12 months, there was a presentation of the final report to the uh, three municipalities in a very similar form to this, but it was in person, of course, back then. And uh, that report was presented uh, from the Lumex group. In early 2020, the municipal administrators from the three municipalities started mapping out a plan. Uh, and then ultimately, as we all know, uh, this global pandemic uh, graced us with its presence and uh, that plan was reprioritized fairly quickly. In late 2020, uh, this was picked back up by the three um, municipalities uh, from an administration perspective. Uh, we reviewed the report with the assistance of Lumex uh, Group with the Huronia Airport Commission in a very similar form to this. And subsequently, uh, prior to year end, we received um, some comments and feedback from the commission uh, with respect to the final report. So pertaining to this evening, uh, the objective is really twofold. Um, for, for those, of the, for those uh, folks watching, as well as, of course, members of council, uh, it is an information session. The goal is to, uh, to have the three, uh, ultimately the three councils or the three ownership groups receive uh, the report, uh, hear the same questions, uh, get the same information in, in one uh, forum. Um, but of course not advance the business of uh, the municipalities. The second purpose is really to receive a next steps report administratively um, to the ownership group of which uh, following Lumex's presentation in a few short moments, you will hear from uh, Tim Leach in uh, Tiny Township, a joint report that was authored uh, from uh, both, uh, from all three municipalities, I should say, on behalf of David Deneau in Midland, uh, and myself in Penetang Machine, and of course, Tim Leach in, in Tiny, with the assistance of, uh, of our municipal staff. So with that, I would like to, uh, to introduce Trent Gervais and Lisa Davidson uh, with the Lumex Group. I believe Trent uh, is going to probably kick things off, uh, and uh, we'll have him uh, present to everyone online the, uh, the final report. Uh, we... Trent, I think you're, um, unless it's just We got the my... best internet in the world tonight, I'm saying low bandwidth. I think, you're in... I, I think we can hear you now, perhaps, Trent, if you want to carry on. You were cutting in and out a little there. Okay, I was just saying I have the best internet money can buy and it's causing me problems tonight. So uh, my colleague is also on the call, Lisa Davidson. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay, so if, um, if I lose my ESA, we'll um, take over. So um, I'll just share my screen. Everybody see that okay? Jeff, is that okay? Yeah, okay. we can see that okay, Trent. Okay, thank you. 
So it is, um, it is a pleasure to be here tonight. This was uh, an exciting project uh, for the Lumix Group. Uh, working with um, uh, uh, just tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the project overview and Trent, just a summary of uh, recommendations and some growth opportunities. Trent, I think you're cutting in and out. I, I, I apologize for interrupting you. Um, is that is 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 it only me having that issue, or is are others having the same issue? I no, think Jeff, others, I'm having the same. same I think issue. others are having the same issue, Trent. I'm not sure if same here. Uh, okay, just just um, just stand by for one can to change locations and see if that sounds good. Just a quick question: the presentation that you, we're going to be presented is the same one that has been forwarded to us so we can follow along is that right or is it a little bit different uh it should be fairly similar this is the one we presented to uh the commission not long ago uh, okay. last month so if it's that one that you have then yes it'll be the same all right thank you Okay, is that any better? So far, so good, Trent. And okay, we'll, we'll let you know if if it uh, if it if it uh, goes back to the way it was. Thanks. I apologize. Um, okay, so um, just to uh, to carry on, just a bit about um, looking at the governance review and recommendations, our economic review and the impact, uh, the foreign investment review, uh, strategic positioning, and growth opportunities, and we'll definitely have time for some questions afterwards. So. Um, very first um, part of the project was just to look at the overview and, um, you know, nothing is cookie cutter when we do uh, go into an airport to look at the opportunities. And um, so when we would end, the first thing we did is looked at um, collecting and reviewing the relevant background information. So we talked to uh, many stakeholders, both um, in the airport sector, um, in the municipal sector, with uh, tourism, with industry. Uh, anybody that we felt was relevant um, as we put this presentation together. The Regional Economic Review and Impact Assessments uh, of the airport. Uh, we also looked at the Infrastructure and Commercial Inventory Review uh, for the airport and an overview of the current and potential governance options. So what is the best options going forward with the airport? And the last uh, few points were the Foreign Investment Review and how that relates. Uh, the opportunity and the, so the cost, the value and added proposition, along with some cost estimates for future development. Uh, we also uh, touched on the strategic positioning for the Hirona Airport. So where does it fit into uh, the overall uh, aerospace industry in uh, Simcoe County? And the last thing we looked at was passenger activity forecasts and overall growth outlook and projections. So it was a very um, well-rounded um, study that we did and you know, we tried to not um, leave any uh, rock uh, unturned. So um, just for anybody on the airport, uh, anybody on the, the call tonight for the sake, um, the airport uh, runway is 3,996 feet. It um, um, has both privately and publicly owned uh, hangars um, and aircraft storage. And this is one of the, one of the great assets of the airport that it is a very strong general aviation airport with many hangars on it um, that um, contributes to the overall um, benefits of the airport. It has an on-site uh, private maintenance facility so uh, we like general aviation and airports because they're buying fuel, they're getting the aircraft fixed, uh, they're buying uh, parts and materials in their community and that helps an airport with some sustainability. Um, of course, probably everybody knows that Zen Air is um, adjacent to the airport and they're an aircraft uh, kit manufacturer. So uh, another great finding is the, the fact that um, they do employ many people and they do need an airport uh, as part of their operation. Uh, also the full, uh, full service fueling, so as it was another benefit um, uh, that's included. 
and service uh, services for medical emergency, including air ambulance. So it's um, again another um, factor of the airport and air travel for the business community. So some private air travel uh, to do business um, uh, both in and out of the uh, community. Um, some of our recommendations uh, that we looked at moving forward, um, definitely um, that um, we feel very strongly that um, airports and municipal airports are, are, um, are included, that you need to develop a strong business plan. So the first part of that would be to look at identifying, you know, the mission goals and the tactics to identify uh, how that the airport can uh, generate revenue and become as sustainable as possible. Um, so come, some of the key focus areas was to look at uh, focusing on general aviation and pilot training. Uh, so it's a, it's a great airport to do both those things. And also we found that when we talked to um, local uh, tourism organizations and businesses that there's a great opportunity to connect uh, with that regional tourism um, folks in the area to see how that the airport could benefit and help them um, again getting folks in and out of, uh, of the area. Uh, we also um, the economic impact of the region uh, yields the positive return on investment. So uh, something very important that we felt um, of the airport that that should be considered. Um, and then uh, the airport governance. So you know it's looking at um, more of an involvement with municipal staff getting involved in the overall. Uh, annual operations, uh, operating and, and capital budgets. So um, we think that um, uh, the municipal staff being more involved in the, that day-to-day -day budgeting operations uh, can assist in being more uh, efficient and effective. Also, uh, possibly assist in in future um, future goals. Improved ongoing updating and reporting to council. So again, the more that uh, council is informed of all the great things happening at the airport and uh, the great opportunities and uh, just being more involved um, it would allow council to have more informed uh, better decision making and uh, of course um, looking at um, having uh, airport operator whether it's a contractor or whether it's in-house um, but having that expertise um, on the aviation sector and we're not necessarily suggesting that you know there's not uh, folks there doing a good job now it's just that uh, having folks that are connected to the aer aviation and aerospace industry uh, that um, can run it like a business and can and know the contacts and can uh, you know run it like a um, uh, an aviation business and have the contacts to be able to move it forward. Um, some of our findings um, that we kind of hinders uh, progress uh, in some ways, uh, and I know this is on the minds of many uh, uh, councillors. It's the Internet um, uh, internet is so critical to uh, those conducting business, as I found tonight. <laughs> um, so the internet access is very poor. So that's something that I think is maybe in the works, but definitely needs um, improvement. And um, c if you could solve that problem at the airport, you could attract even some tenants um, in the terminal, for instance. Um, so lack of awareness of some of the airport activities and events um, and the overall benefit to the community. Uh, when the aviation world travels to an airport for uh, different airport events, they um, uh, stay in the community, they shop in the community. Um, so um, again, the more um, experience that's, um, uh, that's added to the airport staff and, and governance, then the better that will be in getting those messages out. Um, disconnected from um, tourism offerings and attractions um, and, and attraction guides. So again, a really robust business plan that includes a marketing strategy, strategy would go a long way. Um, so the other thing that we uh, noted was um, the lack of um, data. And it's very difficult to get accurate data when you're operating 24 hours a day and, and but not have staffing there 24 hours a day. So um, we feel that with um, a small cost of uh, putting some um, computer equipment on the radio. Uh, for instance, you could track exactly the number of movements uh, coming in out of the airport on an annual basis to help with those decision making. So we found that the current airport users are generally happy. They enjoy uh, definitely the low cost of fuel, um, the friendly staff, the relaxing atmosphere, uh, and that uh, is both um, transit and itinerant traffic coming into the airport. So. Uh, 
uh, pilots look for destinations to travel to, so that's one uh, positive we found. Uh, the streamlined building approvals, uh, we feel that if we could uh, create a process um, to help um, uh, streamline those approvals uh, would help with uh, investing more um, uh, hangar builders to the area. Um, the card lock fuel system, so uh, there is a new fuel system uh, putting into the, uh, being put in the airport now if it's not already completed. Uh, we feel that a card lock system to go with that so it offers uh, the ability to fuel 24 hours a day uh, so that the fuel can be offered in the uh, unstuffed hours might be a, another um, good thing for the airport. Um, the operational equipment breakdown, so, um, you know, um, sometimes older equipment costs a lot more money to maintain. And again, we felt that um, uh, having some updated equipment would make, uh, reduce the operating costs and make the airport operations more efficient. Uh, the fuel system, again, is uh, has been rectified or is in the process of it. I'm not sure where it's at. Um, and the uh, next finding was that the instrument approaches uh, that um, that have been lost from the airport are back. So that's a, something since our report has been rectified, which is, uh, which is great that the current uh, management took care of that. Uh, another um, area that we felt uh, of concern is the slope in the runway. So at one end... Um, we like to see airports uh, runways traditionally as, as flat as possible, and there's a pretty good slope at one end, and that's a major safety issue uh, if by chance there's a plane uh, taking off from uh, the other uh, end of the runway. So the other, um, so yeah, at the other end, it creates a significant hazard. So uh, down the road, if the airport uh, runway is to be expanded, we're recommending that that be uh, repaired at the time. Um, the uh, runway lighting and visual uh, approach slope indicators, um, all that stuff should be considered for upgrade. Again, there is a life expectancy on all that uh, field electrical equipment, and we noted the, the age of it that um, at the same time, there's an opportunity to switch to LED lighting, which um, as we know that those conversions can save um, municipalities a lot of money. So it's a good actually um, opportunity to kind of move that, that forward. Uh, the runway and taxiway surfaces uh, could benefit for some crack sealing. So again, the more um, you pump into operations, operational um, money every year to keep the runway uh, as uh, in good as condition as it can, can uh, delay the cost of having to replace the runway. Uh, the other um, finding was the OLS, so the uh, obstacle limitation surface. Um, needs to be uh, have some work done on it to just do a, a proper evaluation on tree heights uh, that surround the airport uh, to maintain uh, a sufficient OLS. So that's another recommendation. Now we conduct a SWOT analysis, and um, these are always a, a great opportunity to find out uh, what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are for the airport. And some of the strengths, uh, again, um, the lower fuel costs. So. Um, again, when pilots are looking for destinations to fly to, that's one of the main key indicators uh, where, where they decide they want to go. So uh, we found that um, they're competitive, which is good. Uh, the tourism destinations, again, it's that um, given uh, members of the public from other uh, jurisdictions um, uh, a, a place to go to, and especially the pilots. We found that the uh, infrastructure was adequate, so the length of the runway uh, at this point um, meets the current demand for uh, the area. And there is the opportunity to expand it if you need to, which is, um, which is good to know if there's ever the opportunity to do so. Um, there is room to grow, so we're attracting businesses to the airport, uh, those aviation and aerospace businesses. There is uh, ample amount of land to, uh, to move the airport forward. Um, the low tax rate, so, um, you know, in aviation, um, it's kind of no surprise that the margins are very slim, and uh, so aerospace and uh, companies will look for low operating cost, uh, you know, above all in many cases to, to be able to save money. So uh, it's, again, another great benefit. And uh, the streamlined con uh, construction process that have been put in place and with some further improvement uh, could even make that better. Uh, some of the, the weaknesses I've talked about, so the slope in the runway, the internet access, uh, the outdated fuel system that's been rectified. Uh, I think, again, um, running the uh, airport website um, 
in more of a, a business sense and having the ability and the staffing levels to be able to keep that up to date on a on a more regular basis and um, add some components, uh, some business development components, uh, make them more robust um, would help. Um, the aging operations equipment uh, I spoke about and um, the instrument approach has been repaired and some uh, a good robust marketing um, plan is is lacking. Uh, some opportunities we felt with some improved uh, communications uh, about events and general information through social media and we all know that um, social media uh, has to be managed on a daily basis so having the ability to do that would greatly help raise an awareness of, of the great asset that you have. Um, the sightseeing tours for visitors again I think uh, working with uh, tourism agencies and uh, with some charter operators, there's some great opportunities there. Also to look at um, charter flights, so connecting uh, Quebec, for instance, uh, demand and the, uh, to the Great Lake uh, cruises uh, and, and anybody else that, that um, can benefit from that uh, is uh, just another avenue. Uh, development lands prepared for commercial business, so having a plan in place to be ready, almost shovel ready or pretty close that when the opportunity arises, um, you're a viable option uh, when you're competing against other airports. Another um, part of that that we found over time is that aviation businesses decide they want to build, it's usually today. So uh, just being ready for that growth opportunity. And we're not suggesting you need to go out and spend millions of dollars to uh, in that build it and they will come mentality, but just at least having a, a good plan that uh, when development dictates it, that you're ready to hit the go button. Um, some of the threats, again, the uh, current uh, fuel tanks that are in the ground, um, it, we, we're not sure what the magnitude uh, of, um, of them coming out is. Maybe there's some more information since we did the report. Um, some of the other uh, the threats, of course, that you can see on the list here um, are things that need to be considered. Um, there is a competitive area for general aviation traffic, for instance, so again, what sets um, the uh, airport uh, apart from some of the other airports in the area. Now, the other uh, small threat that we felt was, um, of course, uh, Lake Simcoe District is in a big growth pattern. And uh, although it's a threat, we feel that um, it's, it's far enough away from, uh, from this airport that, you know, they're after a different market. They're after the commercial uh, larger jet traffic, um, as an example. And, um, so there's, I think there's a, it's a threat, but also an opportunity to identify where this airport fits in, in uh, Simcoe County. Uh, for governance review, we looked at um, uh, the best models to move forward. Um, you do have a, a, a current airport commission. Uh, we felt that a uh, review of that, the makeup of that commission would be in order. Um, and maybe um, that there's uh, more municipal staff that are added to that, uh, either um, to give advice and oversight or to become members, whichever uh, would work best. But again, having um, just that transfer of knowledge and information back and forth could be an asset. Uh, also, um, having the monthly commission meetings, again, to drive the uh, business plan of the airport and ensure it, it stays on track. Um, presenting an annual budget uh, to council, so um, making sure that uh, the airport um, has that face time with councillors um, so that uh, both parties can understand uh, what's in the best interest of the community and, and the airport. And oversee the annual operations uh, budget as well, so that would be a part of that. And also to propose the, the capital project, so the commission would really uh, help foster all that moving forward. So some recommended revisions, uh, which we know that a lot of that's being done uh, now, uh, but um, again, by uh, adding municipal staff to the mix and um, so the aviation community members and airport users. So having a really good mix of uh, those on the board would be an asset. Um, look at, uh, again, define what the uh, management structure of the airport is, uh, would be uh, so putting um, the right airport staff in place, uh, looking at uh, contracting it out, uh, look at a mix of both, but really review um, if, if the airport's going to operate like a business and think like a business, put the right team in place uh, to move the, the mandate forward. 
Um, increase the frequency of status reports uh, to council. So uh, minutes are rising out of the commission, the commissioner meetings. Again, um, everybody's uh, in it to make sure it's sustainable and successful. So there's an opportunity to do that. A re review and advise on strategic planning. Um, so again, having that input and advise on the annual um, operations budget and advocate for airport growth and initiatives. So uh, a lot of uh, suggestions coming out of that. There's a great uh, commission in place now, but there's the opportunity, of course, to improve it. Uh, so some recommendations again on, on the kind of the management structure, um, but having some accountabilities in place. So ensuring uh, that there's oversight over the uh, budget and expenditures, uh, executing of revenue opportunities, planning for airport development expansion. So it's very difficult for um, to have an airport manager in place that has to go out and plow snow, cut the grass and uh, provide business development uh, initiatives. So uh, again, it takes some creative um, thinking to figure out how um, you can accomplish all that. Working with community agencies to support the economic development and tourism. So again, it's just having somebody responsible that is out pounding the pavement every day to ensure the sustainability of the airport. Uh, so again, um, having that uh, key person and key agency uh, in place to look at uh, obstacle limitation services, the instrument approaches, the airport operations manuals, and emergency plans and safety management systems and uh, all that in place. And although some airports aren't certified, uh, they're registered, um, any uh, airport should be following many of the safety rules uh, that are laid out. Um, this is, um, you know, um, current subsidy um, breakdown. Um, so you can see um, by municipality um, what that um, subsidy looks like. So um, there's about $3.07 is the average um, subsidy to the airport. Uh, based on a population of uh, 37,613. So um, uh, pretty minimal and, and the numbers are pretty low when you look at airports uh, across um, uh, Canada. And this is uh, another um, uh, possibility that we're looking at. What would the magnitude be if um, uh, Tay Township was added to the mix? Um, so you can see that um, uh, when you look at combined with all four municipalities, um, it's got a per capita subsidy of $2.42. So although it, it lowers it uh, uh, down uh, from the 307 to the 242, uh, uh, again, based on a population uh, then of 47,000. Uh, when we looked at this uh, and you look at why, you know, why should you, why shouldn't you, um, the big question comes up, is the airport being used by the entire um, you know, North Simcoe, if you will, as opposed to just the three municipalities that own it. So uh, it wasn't part of our study to uh, determine um, that any further than just recognizing that uh, what it could look like. Um, so if you look at um, the economic review, so in the aviation and aerospace sector, um, this is really encouraging for Simcoe County and uh, we're really impressed as we started uh, working through those numbers. Uh, but you can see that um, in Simcoe uh, County in 2018, there was rough, just shy of 1,800 jobs in the aviation aerospace sector um, compared to 1,258 in 2010. So you can see that um, the aviation aerospace sector is growing in, in Simcoe County, and that's something to pay attention to that, um, you know, how do you take those numbers in 2021 to 25 and and uh, keep that increase moving along. So um, uh, that's uh, really encouraging uh, for Simcoe County. If you look at um, the regional wage comparison, um, so you can see uh, in Simcoe uh, County as a whole, and you can see the average incomes um, throughout the um, uh, different uh, municipalities as well. So this is where we uh, this is uh, where we determine uh, you know what what does the airport contribute to the region and uh, these are the assumptions I won't read the re read through them all um, but I want to get to um, the end result that um, the as of um, when we did the study the GDP so um, 
is uh, 3.3 uh, million dollars a year. The airport supports the local economy. That's um, based on the adjacent business being included in the mix because it needs the runway to operate as well. So that's uh, $3.3 .3 million. And this is a big number. So if you decided um, uh, municipalities struggle with, do we close the airport? And there's a big cost to close it, but also um, what revenues, uh, what GDP loses your community, uh, uh, leaves your community, and that's $3.3 .3 million. So um, that's a, it's, you know, it's an impressive number for a small airport. Uh, again, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on this. This is just the four in investment review. And uh, we look at, um, you know, how many jobs there are in the Canadian aerospace sector. And it's, it's, it's uh, one of the biggest countries for aviation and aerospace and $31 billion, over 213,000 jobs nationwide. Uh, and every year that continues to grow. So if we look at Ontario, Ontario plays a major role in that with $6 billion and 21,000 jobs uh, provincial wide. So uh, again, that's a number to pay attention to that that grows every year. So how can, um, how can your airport uh, benefit from that and attract business to it? Uh, just um, uh, skip through um, uh, some of this, but it just supports that foreign investment review and, and how uh, the Ontario space sector plays into it. So um, just a little bit of strategic positioning. So uh, we feel that um, the strong market for um, the airport is uh, serving the GA uh, sector, which it is now. Um, so those, um, by doing that, so how are we gonna accomplish that and grow it? Uh, so develop a, a mission and vision statement, develop that positive working uh, business plan and create a full service GA airport that has the maintenance repair facilities. You have the um, some repair facilities now, the pilot training and flight school. Um, so, you know, really trying to track that um, line of work. Uh, the charter flights for cottaging and tourism, the charter flights to connect to Great Lake uh, cruises. Um, so um, some other growth opportunities. So uh, some of the high prospects. So we don't like to add things into the report that are pie in the sky. We like to uh, deal with every airport individually. So the private hangar development, you've got a good thing going. Uh, so we feel that that needs to continue to develop more of the private hangars. Uh, the public owned T hangars, um, uh, when we did the study, they were 100% filled and uh, more opportunity for more. So to continue to develop that uh, because it helps the airport uh, to may remain sustainable. Uh, the inbound uh, charter flight, so uh, you have some now, so look at where are people going, where can they go, um, what charter companies can we work with to enhance that, uh, both in uh, Canada and the U.S., because uh, the U.S. market uh, is huge when it comes to that. Uh, the fly-in packages for general aviation pilots, so uh, if I come in for the weekend in my plane, I can go stay in a hotel or go travel around the area, and then the flight training school that we talked about and attracting those aviation and aerospace businesses. So uh, what like-minded companies can move to the area uh, to match the companies that are already there. Uh, the medium to low prospect is once you build up the uh, movements or the, the business at the airport a little more, think about attracting a fixed-based operator. Uh, so the FBO who handles fuel and car rentals and catering and uh, de-icing and all those things. Uh, once you build the airport up to a point where um, that'll be a requirement and you can attract a private operator to uh, to make that investment potentially. Uh, so non-aviation related because of the uh, land potential, so that uh, special event space uh, that you have there, uh, self-storage and outdoor storage, uh, professional, professional service offices, you have a lot of room in the downstairs of your terminal, for instance, that with the right internet um, would make a, a great uh, office facility for somebody and uh, bring revenues into the airport. Uh, recreational facilities, the warehousing and logistics, uh, professional business offices. Um, and then the medium to low would be attracting government agencies or builders or construction contractors and, and down the road a restaurant once you uh, can build up some um, business, more business to the airport. Um, this is uh, just talks about um, some of the infrastructure improvements. Oh, sorry. Uh, infrastructure improvements to think about. So um, 
The first, uh, the short term, is the uh, internet connectivity, the fuel tank upgrades, which are in the works, the general general maintenance and runway of the taxiway services, um, identifying some of the major risks and preparing them, and operational preparedness. So the estimated cost between 19 and 2024 is uh, 475 to 705,000. Um, so taking the fuel tank costs off of that now. Uh, medium term is uh, 20 to 25, uh, sorry, 2025 to 2030 was look at extending the current taxiway. So there's a, a full length uh, taxiway, uh, constructing some revenue generating hangars, the airfield lighting and signage, uh, some tree removal and the access road connection as well. So uh, that's 760,000 to 868,000 uh, would be between 2025 and 2030. And the last um, uh, 2031 to 2040 is uh, a complete runway ex uh, extension and resurfacing and removal of the slope hazard, which is one of the biggest uh, costs in the, this improvement and regrade the slope. Uh, so regrade that slope properly and construct an airfield maintenance building, uh, which is lacking of 10 million. So um, I just want to um, just put a caveat on this that you know, uh, some things are safety related that shouldn't be ignored and other things could be um, driven by development uh, or potential development to the airport. So uh, not to scare everybody with a, a big number of 10 million, but if a substantial business was uh, coming to the airport and it dictated extending that runway to 7,000 feet or 6,000 feet, whatever the case may be, uh, then um, there'd be some major jobs involved um, for the area, which would make that um, uh, spending um, a good return on investment. So you've heard enough of me talking. I just, um, Lisa and I would be happy to uh, take some questions uh, moving forward, um, if there is any. I just uh, will also apologize for my screen. I was up in my office and I just moved to next to the internet. So. <laughs> I have a question. That's uh, George Vatamonker from the town of Penetang Machine. Um, to understand there's a tri-party municipal agreement that's in place. Um, you haven't made reference to that at all. Is that something that would be on the agenda as well to update based on whatever outcomes come from this uh, Deliberation. Oh, you bet. Maybe Jeff, I'll just get you to uh, to take that one. Thanks, Trent. Um, so certainly, uh, certainly one of the uh, things that the three CAOs have talked about is with respect to the agreement. The agreement is a little bit dated, um, and certainly uh, from from the administration perspective, uh, the intent would be that that would be reviewed as part of uh, the governance. Uh, component of the recommendations, which uh, you'll hear uh, in a few uh, moments or the second part of this evening uh, from the joint report, that that is certainly one of the main components of, of uh, how we see things moving forward and, and certainly early on with respect to the governance piece. So I think the short answer is, Councillor Vadavankur, that uh, the intent would be that the, uh, the joint agreement would also be part of Looks like uh, Jeff Rose. I can I can jump in if you don't mind on that. Thank you. And it is definitely going to be part of the review, as he indicated. The agreement is a little dated, and we will just want to bring that back up to speed to make sure it is accurate. So that will be part of the process for sure. Sorry, Trevor, I have a question. The, uh, um, Councillor Main, there. Councillor Main. Oh, thank you. Um, can I ask a question for uh, the consultant staff? One, I think everyone's fun, it's excited to see satellite, uh, well, astronomers aren't, but satellite uh, internet might be a thing of the future. So we'll see if that becomes viable for our rural areas. Two questions was, how have you seen the airport industry change in the pandemic? And are we likely to see it kind of return to normal? And the second question was, it wasn't, it was touched on a little bit, but emergency management. Um, is that another thing that, um, you know, last year was the theme of, 
anything that could go wrong would go wrong. And we've had tornadoes. We're probably going to get another ice storm in the next few years. You know, we have all these uh, extreme weather events that are potentially going to be affecting us. And the airport's uh, emergency capabilities, I think, would be fantastic to be further, uh, I don't know, explored, but a, a partnership with the county. I know the county takes the lead on emergency management. But those are the two questions or two points uh, that I would, would love to hear your thoughts on. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Main, thank you for your question, uh, and it is a is a good one uh, for sure. With the pandemic going on, it's no secret that um, COVID has um, decimated the aero aviation industry, um, like many others. Um, uh, airports um, hurting the most are those that have scheduled service that rely heavily on scheduled service. Uh, what we've seen um, for stats is um, that. Uh, many airports uh, had their movement, so a movement is a takeoff and landing uh, cut in half, um, so they're down 50%. Uh, there's some airports that have scheduled service that have lost 90% of their um, business, which uh, mainly that 10% is general aviation. So um, what we saw over the last um, uh, five or six months, uh, especially the summer months, is that the GA world, although it slowed down some, it um, is still um, still going fairly strong. Um, so I think, um, you know, the rebound for the commercial carriers and the commercial airports is going to take a lot longer to come back uh, than the GA airports. But um, our belief is that if you position your airport right, um, these, the pilots and um, that have been, you know, um, uh, in lockdown for a long time are going to want to be out and get traveling again. We also think it's a great opportunity that uh, when the general public is allowed to get out again and to move around and travel, that um, it's going to take them a long time to build up a trust to start traveling abroad uh, for many people. So we see the airports and tourism um, as, uh, you know, the domestic travel is a, as a great asset. So uh, what can your area do by taking advantage of the airport as an example um, to attract that potential business to the area? So, um, yes, it, um, every airport's been affected, but the general aviations are, are probably spared the uh, the most. Um, to answer your second question, uh, uh, part of my background is emergency management, emergency and uh, services and emergency management. So um, airports, um, your airport could be equipped absolutely to assist in that, whether it's um, it could be a small evacuation shelter, it could be a transportation hub, um, with the facility, um, not sure if it's on backup power, but it could be, uh, that could just be another, uh, play another role. Uh, we also see airports, and I've seen it over uh, my previous career, uh, used many times in emergencies. Um, so again, it's just an asset sitting there that traditionally when uh, essential service staff are taxed the most, um, the airport staff, for instance, may have an opportunity to jump in there. So, um, you know, again, it's not it's not a money maker by any means, but the airport's there to serve the community, and it's just could be another small way that that could happen. So, definitely worth exploring. Uh, thank you for that. Trent, if I might uh, add a bit of uh, uh, data, I guess, to the question about the impact that uh, COVID has had on uh, here on the airport. Um, the fact of it is that uh, despite the, uh, the challenges and hardships it's created in every other area of life, I suppose, uh, our uh, movements are up over last year by 17% and our uh, fuel sales are up by 60% over last year. So, um, as I say, despite the, the, the difficulties that COVID has presented in every other aspect, our airport uh, specifically has actually not suffered, uh, other than some disruption in terms of use of the terminal itself, the uh, the stats for movements and and uh, fuel sales, which generate quite a bit of revenue for the airport, are actually positive. Fantastic. So I think. Uh, is it Councillor Gordon from uh, Midland has a question, Trent. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Um, oh, there, there have been a couple of questions here for me. And the, the slide that um, you spoke about the event opportunities, um, I have heard that a couple of times now. And as I recall, there was at least two events that were proposed and they were denied. 
and I wasn't sure if there's um, a shift in the mentality now. And I don't know whether the issue was with the commission or with the township, but somehow they neither of those took off. And I don't know if there's a, any more. But I'm just wondering if the, if there's a, a willingness now to open up that facility for event opportunities. Um, and my second question is about the threat slide. Um, the Lake Simcoe Airport or the Oral Berry Airport, whatever it was called before, is in significant growth mode. And it's proven so uh, you know, likely to produce income that the county, I believe, owns it 100% of it now. Are we really wise to be competing against our own upper tier of government you know, when our collective tax dollars are actually funding their growth and uh, promotion of that large airport, uh, you know, is it really a wise thing for us to try and go, go it alone and, and uh, use our local people's tax dollars to compete against our upper tier? I see the, uh, the jobs that, that you indicated. There was, that slide was kind of depressing in my mind. P Middle and Penetang, the jobs have been plummeting since 2010, if I read it right. But meanwhile, Simcoe County jobs are skyrocketing which I can only assume are that airport that we're competing with, that it's owned by the county. And a pet, a tiny township jobs are, are high, clearly, because the property's in tiny township. So I guess I'm just, I'm quite concerned about that threat and whether it really makes sense in these economic times when we're gonna be asked to, to slash budgets everywhere we can to continue to fund something where we're competing with our own upper tier. I was wondering if you could speak to that. No, thanks, Councillor Gordon. Um, the first, um, the first part of the question I'd, I'll speak about is the events. So, um, what we are really encouraging that the events should be aviation, aerospace related. So, the fly in breakfast, the uh, Copa for kids, um, where kids have the opportunity to go up flying. Uh, so, any any events that are aviation related that are going to promote and encourage uh, aviation, the aviation industry. Um, so they're, they're the events that uh, I'm not sure where it's at since we did the, uh, our study, but they're the type of events that we would encourage you to uh, attract to the airport. Um, second part of the, to the um, question is uh, related to uh, Simcoe District Airport. So um, they sit um, as a member of Southern Ontario Airport Network, which is um, 11 of the bigger airports in, in Southern Ontario. Um, and each one of those airports have kind of defined, you know, what, what type of business they, they're in and, and not in. Um, and although um, uh, Simcoe District won't turn away general aviation traffic, it's not what they're uh, out there promoting, um, actively promoting. So they're out looking for um, the big jet traffic that, um, as we all know, Pearson before COVID, things are a little bit different right now, but before COVID, we're reaching capacity. And the Southern Ontario Airport Network was created to actually try and push some of the regional traffic uh, out of um, uh, Toronto Pearson. So um, Lake Simcoe District Airport, uh, we're positioning that they would be uh, one of the two airports between Peterborough and, and uh, their airport to um, look at attracting that business on the east side of, uh, of Toronto. So. Uh, they're after the big jet traffic. They're after the big uh, maintenance and repair overall facilities that need seven or seventy, sorry, seven thousand feet of runway to land on. Um, that's the type of business they're interested in. So, uh, one of the things we always say with airports is, um, you know, and you're going to go to the closest airport if you can. Um, so, uh, those that are traveling to North Simcoe are going to want to land in North North Simcoe as opposed to. Um, um, to the other airport. So uh, they're going to go to the closest airport if they can. Um, you can't land a 737 in your area, so they're going to, to to land over there. So um, I understand uh, what you're saying, but I'd also suggest that there's a place for each airport. Uh, they play two totally different roles. Thanks. Sorry, just a quick note uh, to Councillor Gordon. Uh, Bill, um, on the slide, when we were talking about this last time, there was one business that moved from Midland into Tiny, and that's why you'll see the numbers are exactly minus Midland plus Tiny. I think that was uh, Zenair. It used to have offices on Aberdeen, I believe. But all, overall, it looks like this is a very much a promotion of uh, the airport as the industrial airport industrial hub. So thanks for that question, Joe. Always appreciate it. Thanks, so I could just a quick follow up on that then. Just going along with that, that concept of threat, and I'm glad you identified it because it's on a lot of people's minds. Why, just out of curiosity, and I did ask this back in the summer, whatever it was, we got together in the basement. Why did we not 
or would choose not to look at divestment as an option while having you study, um, even if it's not something a lot of people's appetite is for, we seem to have maybe done ourselves a disservice by not at least examining that option while we, you know, engaged you uh, to, to at least consider what divestment would look like, uh, or perhaps you know, private ownership for the people that call that air, airport home. You know, if there was a, if it costs one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to run the place, and there's forty airplanes there, that's only three k per plane owner, and now now it isn't the ratepayer that's funding it; it's the the people that use it. You know, so I'm just wondering why why we didn't put that into the scope and that may not be a question you can answer that might be more for the CEOs who, who scope this document out. Thank you. So um, it, it wasn't uh, part of our mandate to look at that. Um, um, the one thing that um, we always uh, look at is there's always a cost to do that so that should be determined and uh, in many cases airports have negotiated long-term leases with um, with the hangar owners. So that's the first consideration that what's the cost and the legal battles to um, get out of those leases. And uh, we recently worked with um, another airport um, where the cost was um, quite huge and the lawsuits were, were already starting to fly at the threat of it. So, um, I mean, we if it's the wish of um, councils, we'd be happy to look at that. Um, but I would just caution you that there are some of the things to consider. Trent, maybe I'll just jump in and I apologize for my prior uh, struggle. Uh, just, just for everyone on the line, I think in the report, if you start on page 31, uh, there is definitely a number of options that are presented with respect to the ownership and the governance models. And one of them, the first one actually presented, I believe, is uh, where Lumex has explored the divestiture of the airport. Uh, and there's a number of other models that they've explored as well. Certainly, if it's the will of the ownership group to explore that further, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, we could certainly re-engage uh, Lumex to dig a little deeper on that. But certainly, as the joint report identifies from the CAOs, the assumption has been uh, otherwise based on uh, the results from, uh, from the Lumex group. But there is certainly uh, a number of options there for for members of council's perusal, uh, starting on page 31, section three, I believe, of the of the Lumex report. Not not sure who's hosting, but uh, maybe I'll just speak up. Hi, uh, hi everybody. Good evening. Just uh, a couple of points I wanted to mention. First of all, Lake Simcoe Regional Airport, uh, the county owns 90 percent. Uh, we partner with the city of Barrie for the other 10 percent. And I just wanted the, I would suggest echo the comments of the consultant. I think they are uh, two different markets. And I think that's the, uh, the opportunity and the challenge perhaps for the Heroni Airport. To, uh, how do we differentiate ourselves? But absolutely, uh, Lake Simcoe Regional is part of the Southern Ontario Airport Network zone. And their objective um, is to take up business from Pearson and to grow that business on a number of fronts, which I would suggest is a little bit different than what... Uh, Peronia Airport is all about. Um, the other piece, uh, just, and I stand to be corrected, it's been a while since I was involved, but the 120000 roughly is the municipal subsidy at the airport. It's certainly not the total operating cost of the airport, and that number I don't have uh, off the top, but uh, it's, uh, it's a little more than 120000 for sure to operate the airport. But I think that goes back to one of the points the consultants made. I, I think the airport commission, the airport itself, and the owners, we really haven't done a good job of uh, presenting the airport, marketing the airport, not only to the community and to potential customers, but to ourselves as owners and councils to better understand. Uh, there was a point where we were seeing annual budgets coming forward from the airport and having those discussions as part of our annual municipal budgets, but um, that hasn't happened, I don't think, recently. So there's definitely some opportunity there, and I think there, we owe it to ourselves to make sure we all do understand um, what the status of the airport is and, and have a baseline of information before we get too far down the road in terms of making any decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, if you don't mind, I've got pretty good uh, internet. I upgraded my Wi-Fi today so I can see everyone's picture. So I think I'll go to uh, Mayor Strathern next. And then I'll Can't hear you, David. Sorry, I'll go to Mayor Strathern. And then I'll go to uh, Mr. Mintoff. Oh, okay, thanks, David. Um, I have first a comment. 
And the, and uh, we, uh, David and I were talking about the report and some of the recommendations and uh, he threw out the uh, the idea of the divestiture. And I said, well, perhaps we should go down to the GO station down at the waterfront and take the train down to Toronto. Well, of course you can't because we don't have tracks anymore and you'll never get them back. Uh, it's the same. Same if you divest totally of the airport, you'll never get it back. Uh, that would be my first comment. I also agree with uh, Mayor Cornell that uh, this airport in no way, shape, or form can compete with Lake Simcoe Regional as, because it's part of SOAN. SOAN is a very structured uh, means by which Pearson will divest of uh, less profitable uh, and uh, non-passenger related activities. But I also have uh, some questions uh, around, um, we have a 4,000 4, foot runway and Councillor Main asked this question before at the last meeting, and I just don't remember the answer. I think you said that the uh, this this runway would accommodate a dash 100, uh, uh, or maybe it was a 400 or a 200. I don't remember. Is that in fact the case? And what would the range of an aircraft like that be? Because if we are talking about um, a um, more focused marketing plan. Uh, tied into things like cruise ships, of which there are at least two more lines looking to come into Midland in 22, I believe. Uh, and one of them, at least one of them being using Midland as a terminus. Then you start to have people who are, are, are basically deposited in our area and may need to go back to, for example, Chicago. So there are these opportunities. And the, But the second question, so that's on the plus side and on the negative side, I guess, is... Um, we have a lot of local airports, whether it's Edenville or Collingwood, or um, uh, Aurelia, uh, Bracebridge, they all offer flight school. So if we were to look at attracting a flight school into our airport, what would notionally be the draw that we would have? So in other words, what's the likelihood of success for getting enough students to make that viable? If, if you have that data, I'd be interested in hearing what it is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just um, I can answer uh, the first part of your question. So um, the airport can land uh, accommodate a dash eight. So when you think about um, that perspective, um, we'd have to look at what size, but a dash eight three hundred or something. So you know it could be um, you know fifty anywhere fifty to seventy passengers. So um, the other um, the other part. Um, um, of the question is, um, there's a lot of flight schools out there that, um, you know, are opened up that you can go, for instance, and get your private pilot's license if you choose. But um, what I would look at is um, a flight school that would separate your airport from somebody else's. So there's a lot of uh, international um, pilots that are required, for instance. So could you attract an international school? Um, could it be uh, ultralight, um, uh, ultralight flight school? Um, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of new drone, um, unmanned um, uh, aircraft that are that are, you know, reaching um, potential. So, um, so I wouldn't suggest, you know, it's just attracting another flight school that are going to train four or five, you know, um, pilots in a year. It's, um, you know, what niche market can you get into that nobody else is doing? And and that's kind of my point behind the the solid business plan. Thank you. Thank you. Council, Councillor Mintop. Thank you very much. I just wanted to offer a couple of comments uh, with respect to Councillor Gordon's question about whether the commission um, is uh, open to uh, encouraging different events uh, at, at, the, at the airport. And I just wanted to say that uh, as a member of the commission for the last two years, we've had two um, significant proposals brought to us. One of them, one event was for a concert type venue. Um, we worked with the proponent, but unfortunately what happened there without getting into too much detail is the proponent was asking for us to undertake all of the liabilities and responsibilities for everything from porta potties to uh, picnic tables to clean up through public works and all that kind of stuff, but wasn't prepared to make any kind of significant commitment to any kind of revenue that we might generate from that uh, from that opportunity, and uh, in so asking for more uh, specific information, he decided to, he, he had lost interest. The second opportunity was to host uh, drag races on the on the airport runway. 
Um, we worked very much with the uh, with the proponent of that one to try to make sure that we could get the appropriate uh, um, insurance policies in place and everything to to make sure that we didn't expose them the airport and the three municipal owners to a significant amount of liability. We also found out from other airports that had hosted this type of event that uh, quite often it created uh, significant damage to the runways as well. So we declined it because the amount of money that he was offering us wasn't even enough, probably even maybe to cover the cleanup of the, of the runway with the burnt rubber and all that kind of stuff. So we certainly are interested in that. We very clearly understand the importance and the desire of the uh, three host municipalities to uh, generate as much revenue as we can to offset the deficit that we operate in. But we feel that we have to have the right things that uh, will generate reasonable revenue for us without exposing the municipalities to that type of uh, potential liability as well. So thank you for the question. Makes perfect sense. Thanks for the follow-up on it. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion. Any uh, final questions? I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I think we did have this book till seven. Um, Mayor Strathern. Thank you. Uh, uh, this question is really about the, uh, I was just noticing on your opportunities, inbound charter flights. If this airport were to actually attract a charter service, what would that do to its status? And I understand there's sort of a hierarchy in terms of status for airports. Would we be eligible for more significant federal funding as a consequence of that? Uh, Your Worship, um, I think the funding you might be referring to is ACAP funding, and that's for a regularly scheduled service. So there's a certain threshold you'd have to reach uh, to get there. Um, I think it's, uh, don't quote me, I think it's a 1,000 passengers a year for three years. Um, so there'd be a criteria like that. So um, the other thing that I want to mention that um, with our experience in working with airports over the years that um, the better you can collaborate um, as a region um, and have a solid business plan, uh, the more inclined you are to uh, to be able to get some uh, federal and provincial funding to move your airport forward. So I, I know I'm not telling council anything that you don't already know, but um, I, I think I just wanted to leave you with that, that um, it really should be um, looked at as, as a, an asset working together to be successful in, in many different directions. So thank you. Any further questions? Not seeing any. Well, on, on behalf of uh, the CAO, certainly I'd like to express the appreciation to Trent and Lisa and the Lumix group for certainly being very accommodating to some of the newer players here in, uh, in the North Simcoe area. I thank them very much for, for allowing us to get some of the background on this and again, to reintroduce it to the council members and some of some of the council members are also new. So I think this refresher was certainly uh, worthwhile. I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Tim, and he'll uh, give you an overview of the uh, council report. Thank you very much. And, and thank you, Trent and Lisa for that uh, presentation. That was very good. And thank you everybody for attending uh, tonight. Um, we developed a, it's a joint uh, CAO report that's uh, been, provided to everybody to uh, provide a very brief summary. Uh, Jeff did uh, uh, give us a great background, how he got, so I won't uh, uh, pain you and go through all those initial uh, parts at the start for the, uh, the background of where we're at today. Uh, but essentially, um, we did get together with the three CAOs and we've spent some time uh, reviewing this and meeting with the uh, with the commission. Uh, the commission has been very accommodating uh, throughout this entire process. Part of that was the report that uh, uh, Lumex did again for the commission with us uh, present. And then uh, subsequently, the uh, airport commission did provide a summary, which has also been provided to everybody of their findings um, in the report and how they want to move forward. So the key to this uh, the report is, is we are looking um, really at the three main um, issues that were identified, which is the long-term capital infrastructure investment, uh, immediate need for replacement of the fuel system that was obviously accomplished and that should be just about almost up and running now. Um, and I thank the Midland Engineering for helping out with uh, getting that going and also the contractor. And then the governance model that uh, that we did uh, talk about with, with Trent. So in moving forward on this, uh, 
um, unless there's any further details that people would like to uh, discuss tonight. But uh, moving forward, we felt that one of the main things uh, to get us going uh, would be a uh, task force, which would be a joint task force made up of um, obviously the three uh, from the ownership group. And uh, within this task force, uh, what we're thinking as far as the membership within that to keep us going as they talked about to help develop the governance model would be uh, have somebody from, uh, from staff, a uh, representative from each of our uh, municipalities as a staff member. Um, and we're also looking at having an aviation individual involved, uh, which we feel would bring some expertise to the table and uh, a little bit broader knowledge than what we uh, currently have. Um, the airport manager, obviously involved, uh, that's, he's a key player, obviously, in this whole process. And then um, uh, representation from our, our three separate councils. Um, with that group, what we're looking at doing is... Um, is making sure that they really focus on, on what we want to do, get the task force together and develop a, a roadmap essentially for how we're going to move forward. And uh, basically looking at a lot of the items, looking at the SWOT analysis, uh, looking at how do we address those in a proper fashion, a logical fashion to really with the goal of making sure that the airport is a sustainable uh, business and that uh, it can maintain and obviously uh, provide some services and uh, for both our, our business and our recreational population that we uh, do enjoy up in this area. Um, so what our, what our goal is out of this, obviously we can't move forward, but one of the things that we're, we're recommending to bring back to all of our individual councils is to establish this task force um, made up of the individuals, develop a roadmap that we can present back to through the councils so that there's a consistent approach of, of all three of us uh, through this central uh, task force. And um, what, we're, what our idea was is that we could get this task force together, work together and have uh, by August, we feel that we could get a really good roadmap using the Lumex report, using the airport commission report, uh, because that was uh, that was very well done also plus also some of the uh, utilizing some of the skills that we can bring to the table as far as business management uh, capital management and moving forward so in the end um, we feel that there's also uh, good representation we have with various other groups we got the heart of Georgian Bay the EDCNS the North Simcoe uh, futures um, so we have various other different uh, uh, tools that we have in our toolbox uh, that we can continue to utilize for this development uh, moving forward. So based on that, that's what uh, the CAOs had felt and, um, and that's contained within the report and uh, open up the table if, if there's any further questions. John. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, just on the topic, I know everyone wants to talk about uh, divestment, but that's a whole separate conversation. Um, I guess the one question about divestment is if we're if we follow the strategic plan, we implement and we invest in this asset. If ever there comes a time to talk about or review divestment, our asset has been maintained and is the value of it is perhaps increased if we put money into that. Is that the consensus with? Irregardless of div divesting or public ownership or private ownership, but the strategic uh, initiative that we've undertaken makes sense either way. I think from what we've seen is that's one of the things is the sustainability of the operations. I think one thing that Trent did talk about was some aging infrastructure, um, some repairs to the runways. Um, even things like internet, if you, if you want to take a step forward of, of having further businesses in there, you know, the internet is, is, is critical. Um, so that's been our focus in looking at this is, is how do we maintain this as a, a sustainable business adventure so it can stand on its own. And obviously part of that is, um, all of your assets that are contained within the overall asset and, um, and what's the cost uh, to manage that and lay that out over a time frame, so that we can understand what the full investment would be, how we capture that investment to keep the airport sustainable. There's obviously various different tools in order to, to accomplish that. I think uh, Mayor Strathern. Thank you. I think, uh, I think Councillor Gordon's got his hand up there, but I'm not sure. 
You, there's a there's a hand symbol on your screen. Oh, sorry, that's left over from before. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, questions are all answered. There we go. Uh, I have a question around the internet, uh, and it's uh, perhaps made that be answered by uh, Warden Cornell, and that is the uh, the um, oh dear, no, I've forgotten the name of it. The Pro Swift project. Does does is there any Swift uh, program that like might uh, link up with the airport uh, on the books or is that uh, wishful thinking? Um, and I apologize, but I can't say specifically. The, the only uh, North Simcoe SWIFT programs would be the ones that were identified through that uh, RFP that was announced back in December. And I'm not sure if Tim could speak to that. I honestly can't recall if we had anything. I don't think there was anything in the area of the airport, but uh, I stand to be corrected, Tim. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mayor Fennell. Um, yeah, the uh, the SWIFT initiative is for the fiber to home. Um, that'll get this latest one that just got awarded. Uh, uh, there's about 5,000 homes that will be affected. And it's mainly along um, within Tiny Township. It's mainly along the shoreline before the uh, below the escarpment. That's where we really lose our, our internet in the township. Um, up in the areas that where the airport is and a lot of the top of the escarpment, um, what, the, what we're looking at doing there is continuing to enhance the wireless. Uh, just because of the density of uh, it's a lot of farm community up on top of the hill. So you may in four kilometers have three driveways. Um, so we are looking at that from uh, how do you get the fiber to home to the towers so that they can provide the proper internet uh, for locations like that that don't have the population density or the ISP that's interested uh, uh, because they don't have the customer base. So we are looking at both wireless and wired uh, connectivity. We're continuing to put up towers and um, that is an objective of ours working from the diff with the different uh, providers. So if I can, and I'll just build on that. So I just wanted to be clear on the SWIFT before I uh, said anything further, but uh, in Tiny, we do have an ad hoc committee that's looking at broadband from a number of perspectives and building off of that uh, gap analysis that we did in North Simcoe a couple of years ago. So to Tim's point, um, in other areas, we're looking at different uh, options with regards to internet, and certainly the airport has been part of our consideration there, um, as have a couple of our, uh, uh, what do we call them, blackout spots within the municipality, like our the village of Wyville, is um, one would think would have pretty good internet capability and cellular service, but it doesn't. So we're looking at a couple of things there at our fire hall. Can we, um, as Tim has said, put up a tower, which we have now approved with one of the ISP providers. So um, the airport is on our radar, but uh, nothing came out of the recent uh, SWIFT announcement with respect to that. Thank you. I think uh, Councillor Main raised an interesting point and that SpaceX is, um... Uh, satellite constellation. They now apparently have the most number of satellites in the world up in space, and it's for this internet connectivity piece. Some of the northern communities now have uh, bandwidth that exceeds the uh, federal standard that's being applied to SWIFT, and perhaps there's an opportunity to connect with SpaceX being an airport, and Mr. Musk, and maybe he'd be benevolent enough to set us up with some sufficient bandwidth. I don't know. It's an interesting prospect. Yeah, through the uh, through our ad hoc committee, also that that is a line item in there that we that we are looking at because that is something that's emerging uh, quite quickly, and uh, they're dealing with a lot of the dark sky issues and trying to get them when, once they get up into orbit. So there's a fair amount of options that are out there that are being provided, and part of our ad hoc committee and a consultant we're working with, we are uh, trying to uncover all those different opportunities, especially in these areas that don't have the density um, that some of the ISPs want to see. Thank you. You can consider extending an invitation to Mr. Musk to join the task force. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Councillor sorry. Gordon. A quick one. I mean, so you're going to put in a tall tower in Wyville to service that community. Why couldn't an equally tall tower? be erected uh, near the uh, airport. I mean, obviously you got to put a light on it or whatever, so planes don't smash into it, but, and then you can blast yourself internet from the Weigel Tower. That sounds like you already got the infrastructure ready to go. Just out of curiosity. 
we do look at uh, the mapping. Every tower that goes up, they show the mapping that the tower will affect. And uh, the providers we've been using, we've been mapping the whole township and showing what the coverage area is. And we are looking, there's one in, um, in Wybell and there's one in uh, Wybridge that we're, we're putting up and there's several hours, others that are up. So we are trying to knock them down with the tower providers based on the mapping. Uh, we even looked at a solution we had in our community center down the road at the TTCC, um, which was through point to point, um, was erecting up a tower. Uh, they did review the airport uh, as we did through as Councillor Mintoff had requested us to look at it and we did take a look at that and it, they felt that it wouldn't improve anything better than what they currently have with what they could provide. Um, so part of that mapping we are still continuing to look at that and um, definitely part of our committee will be obviously the internet being one of the top priorities that we have to look at for the airport to sustainability. Thank you. Um, Mayor Strother. Uh, just uh, I'm, I'm wondering what uh, you're, you want us, what's the next step here? Are you going, do you want council, is something coming forward to each of the councils, for, like for example, a recommendation to go to a task force uh, format to look at the three uh, areas that you've got outlined in, in the report, uh, and then coming back to council with expanded recommendations on the, the matters that are embedded within your report and I guess there's some appetite to revisit uh, whether or not uh, you, you hang on to the airport or not or, or privatize or whatever. Is that the next step that you'll come to council with that? That's correct. I think what uh, uh, David, Jeff and I had agreed on is we want to get the task force um, out there for the consideration of the councils so that we could uh, start to put that task force together as soon as possible. And then uh, from that, we'll uh, work with directly get that group set up and then make sure that there's a clear set of objectives uh, that they have to follow. So we're not chasing their tail. And then um, um, Obviously, through that, we'll continue to report through councils because we want to ensure it's consistency uh, through all three groups um, that we don't go off in one direction and each of us going our own different ways. So that's when we felt that task force would be step number one and then agree the fact of the uh, one of their first tasks is to map out um, how we move forward uh, with the airport and the recommendations from Lumex. So um, then when, when can we expect, I guess, the next question would be, when can we expect to see this? So we'll work together, Jeff and uh, David and I, um, we'll work together and provide an update on, um, well, now that we know what direction that, uh, um, or what idea of moving forward, um, and then we'll be able to uh, have those presented properly to each council so that direction can be set. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, I don't see any more hands up. I can see all the screens and uh, okay, I guess uh, in the end, thank you very much everybody for taking the time tonight to come and view this and uh, I think it was uh, a great step forward to get everybody on the same page. Um, exciting project to look at and I think there's some opportunity for us all to, so that we can make some good uh, decisions moving forward on how we continue on with the airport and, uh, and ensure that it remains a sustainable asset. So again, thank you very much for your time and uh, everybody have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you safe. very much. Yeah. Thank Stay you. safe, everyone. Thank you. Have good a night. good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you.